All right, here we are back again. It is our 11th show of Hearth Center. We got a jam-packed show for you, as we always do. We got a full crew, and we got our Legacy Championship captains joining us here tonight. We are going to start off up at the top left, a uh, frequent collaborator to the show. He's here to talk about Legacy, and definitely not Hero. It's the legendary captain of Foolish Mad Men. It is Diamond 22. How you doing, Diamond? Doing good. I, as you can see, don't have the diamond on the wall today, but it's there in spirit. Don't you worry. Nice. Excellent picture, too, by the way. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Mr. F2L himself. He'll be trying his best this evening to not get himself banned again. It is the king of bands. It is Robobson coming at you live at 2 a.m. his time. How you doing, Robobson? What is up, everybody? Thank you for the wonderful introduction. I got my wine to help me sleep after this. I have completely screwed up my sleep pattern, so I'm excited to just talk about everything. Nice. Love to hear it. Uh, I, of course, am your host, as always, Ron Mexico. Oh my god, Robobson actually wrote an intro for me? Nobody's ever done that so far. Love to see it. The man, the myth, the mullet. Uh, love it, dude. <laughs> Not a mullet, but hey, that's fine. I appreciate you writing it the intro. It looks like one. <laughs> and, that's the main uh, thing. Yeah, solid, solid. Next up, in our top right, we have our resident wild guru and member of the uh, the recent, I guess, F2L hegemony that's been starting here. It is Marty B. How you doing, Marty? Yeah, I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> My second in command. Well, nice. Sort of. I'm basically wild rebob, so... <laughs> Easy. Yeah, we got a we got kind of like an F2L packed show uh, tonight, it seems, too, because F2L just ripped through all of THL this this week, um, which we'll talk about shortly. And of course, last but not least, to my bottom right, uh, almost had a dog picture as a instead of the GIF, maybe coming next week. Uh, it is THL's most recent favorite doctor, Dr. Lotus Knight. How you doing? I just realized it was talking muted. Um, I'm doing well. I'm very happy to be here. Heart Center is always such a nice a highlight for my week. Glad to hear it. Well, we are happy to have you here, of course. And uh, without further ado, because we always have so much to cover, we're just going to go straight into Players of the Week. We're going to start off with Hero. Normally, I'd start from the top down, but uh, Diamond, I'm not going to do that to you and have you read off the Hero Player of the Week. Robobson, can you tell me who was the Hero Player of the Week this week? Yeah, sorry, Diamond. So, Hero Player of the Week was played anchor in what well, you've described it as a David Goliath story, vote of some confidence in F2L. I would not describe it as that. I would say it was very closely matched. Uh, Captain uh, of F2L does something. Night... <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> in a Sunday night showdown, the Chronic clinched the week and a semi-final appearance in a sweep. Uh, so what you put here is F2L is doing a lot of forgetting this season. I agree. So watch out for us and our go-to hero seed, four seed, the Chronic. Yep, that write-up brought to you by Based Inc. Pulling Rare, double duty this week in write-up. She also did the write-up for Legacy. Uh, congratulations to Chronic. Congrats to F2L, of course, for advancing in Hero, which we will get to when we get to our Hero recap. Next up for Legacy Player of the Week, I think, I think maybe Diamond might want to read this one off, though. Go ahead and take it away, Diamond. Yeah, for sure. My guy, Automated Button, has been having a killer rookie season. He's chilling at 8-1 and one and now has made it in the finals. Last week was an absolute tester for him. He came down to, came into the match, two matches down, and then a loss. We, it was all over for us, but he sparked the comeback for the fellow Mad Men to reverse sweep to make it in the finals. That was written by Based. Good job, A, but you, you kicked butt. Nice. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> clutch. A rare reverse sweep. Um, which, of course, we will talk about in the Legacy section. Next up, for Wild Player of the Week, Marty, can you tell me who is the Player of the Week for Wild? So we have Burnt, a good friend of mine. He wins Player of the Week honors for taking out Wild Standout Battle Tagger in a 3-1 en route to handing everyone's a winner a resounding 17-7 loss 
making sure to seal Hair Club's playoff spot and even secure their team a rematch against the Wild Juggernaut in round one of the playoffs. So that is brought to you by Itachi. Nice. All right. And last up for Pro, uh, Berserk came through in a big way for F2L this week, taking a tough Game 5 victory over Tonbury Blue to seal the win and take over the top spot in Pro Series Pink Conference. It's been a long wait, but thanks to an opportune bye week for Popeye's spicy chicken sandwiches and a strong team performance from Berserk and the rest of F2L, we have a new leader. It's been all F2L last week across THL as this crew looks to step on the gas and head for multiple series titles. And there it is, your players of the week. Congratulations to all four of these players. Uh, really, really tough contests throughout and extremely well done. A lot of these coming through very, very crucial with um, the stakes in a lot of these series. And with that, uh, we are going to move on to our first recap. Diamond doesn't have a whole lot of time to spend with us tonight, so we are going to lead with Legacy rather than Hero like we normally do. Let's get the meta report up on the screen here. Uh, and we're not going to talk too much about this meta report either because, I mean, really, there's, there's not a whole lot of teams play anymore. You know, we got some pretty small sample sizes. That's your top five frequent lineups. Druid, Paladin, Rogue, Warrior, the most commonly brought one, although it didn't support a great win rate. Overall, we're still seeing kind of the same thing band-wise with Rogue, Warrior, and Paladin in the lead. Interestingly enough, though, Rogue back up in that top spot for most banned, uh, probably due to the presence of Weapon Rogue, I would expect. Uh, what do you guys think of this meta? This playoff yeah, this, meta we're looking at. This looks like a lot of planning and counter queuing. We don't really see Warrior have a negative win rate very often, but here it does only not even 37%. You know, Hunter being very high up is a surprise. We haven't really seen that very often at all. When you look at the overall win rate for the season, it really shows the discrepancy with Hunter. Only 41.25% all season long. So it really does look like people are just trying different things and to gain a small advantage over their opponents. Yeah, absolutely. Makes a lot of sense. Um... A lot of times, maybe I would reach out to uh, our other panelists for some insight on the meta, but seeing as Diamond and Rebobson happen to be captaining against each other this upcoming week, uh, I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to ask you guys thoughts on the meta right now in call with each other. So we can just move straight to the recap. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to say that the, I think the, the Hunter, Shaman... Uh, Paladin, Warlock lineup is, is probably the way to go this nice. week. <laughs> Old strategy, I like For it. For sure. All right, and let's get that up on the screen. Legacy Gold, your week that was in Legacy Gold. We still, at the start of last week, had three teams from Legacy Gold being represented in the playoffs. Um, Two of them, of course, played each other. Foolish Mad Men versus Always Top Deck Lethal. We see two, obviously, advancing in Foolish Mad Men and F2L. Uh, we're going to start with Foolish Mad Men versus ATL, though. Diamond, take it away. Talk to me about what happened here in this match. A lot of stress on my end, that's for sure. So, <laughs> starting off, um, Jimbo versus Jester. I'm... I think this was a rematch. That was really close. So I started, that started, I was like, oh, this is fine. And then Dardar lost. Then I was like, okay. I thought Dardar was going to win. Then Ben swept, and I was like, okay. Or automated Ben. So he swept. I was like, all right, feeling good. Then Justin won as well against Nails on stream. I was like, okay. Comes down to me and Shunsui. The diamonds, you know? And then I got the dub in five, and I'm pretty happy that I was able to. Wasn't able to convert later in a different series that I'm not going to talk about. But right. <laughs> pretty happy of the team pulling it back. Because I know if um, Justin swept, there was actually a chance for me to go 2-3. And I, I think we still made it, which is really interesting. But True. since he let the one point, I had the win straight up. 
had all the pressure. I mean, there's something to be said for that. The captain coming through in the five seed, uh, maximum pressure, and, you know, the the series on the line right there and taking the five-game victory over Shansui to advance. Uh, nicely done, and congrats. And we're excited to see the matchup next week, of course, of Foolish Mad Men versus F2L. Um, on the other side of things, F2L, Robobson, you didn't really have to sweat out much of anything here. Uh, this series was over fast. Talk to me about what happened with F2L Red versus Flame Pimps. Okay, so yeah. So so much like Mad Men A2L, this, well, it, it did start with two match wins very quickly off the bat, but then it ended with the third one. Uh, so it started off with Slard, Slad versus Dible TF1 and he just very quickly swept there. Uh, I've got to give some serious props to Slad. Um, he, he had a bit of an adjustment period at the start, but Guy is an absolutely killer five seed, and you've got to give props to any five seed who captains themselves on their own fantasy team. Nice. That, 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 <laughs> that takes balls, and it has really paid off for him. He's like second in fantasy at the moment. That's awesome. Uh, then my match versus Taco Cat, it was it was a bit goofy, but I got the three one win. And then it came down to Mayan versus Valera slash FBM two. Not sure what to call them. Uh, and it was looking pretty dicey. Um, I don't know if you got to see Mayan's priest, but it sucked. Um, it just sucked really hard into what we were up against. So we just kind of tried to make a really anti aggro priest and we're like it'll just lose the mirror whatever it's fine it then lost twice to the aggro to the other two decks and then won a mirror so go figure. we take those uh yeah <laughs> but um interestingly enough we do actually have a highlight clip from one of the moments yes. from mayan's match that will be coming up yep. towards the end of the show yeah. it was extra spicy so that'll be yeah, fun that game to, was... uh, to rehash yeah. Interestingly enough, going into Mayan's match, it was actually possible for us to lose every, all three remaining matches and still go through. Uh, if if they we had lost all three, two and three, we would still have gone. True. Yeah. So we, um, I think me and so obviously we see the no contest there, place. right? Once things were decided. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they were decided by like Friday evening. So I think everyone just fancied a weekend off. Didn't want to give us anything away. And yeah, feels feels good to be a member the of the team of amnesiacs that is F2L this season right now. And uh, we'll see if they keep forgetting when it comes to the final match against the Foolish Mad Men, who still have found a way to not lose this season. Uh, it'll be very interesting to watch. Um, Usually at this point, we would move on to Legacy Red. Um, actually, yeah, let's just get that up on the screen here real quick. Oh, look, there's literally nothing there. Uh, wow. There are no, there are no <laughs> Legacy Red teams left. All right, moving on to Silver. <laughs> so, Legacy Silver, there was one match. Flame Pimps was the team that reigned supreme in silver at the end of or at the beginning of last week they of course did have that rough match against f2l red losing three to twelve as we've already covered and that does it for you for the legacy recap we do have our playoff bracket up on the screen now and uh i often will leave our predictions to kind of the, the territory of Tavern Talk, since they are more the prediction show. But this being only one game left to be played, and the Legacy Captains here, I think we can do a little bit of predictions ourselves. Uh, what do you say, guys? <laughs> Diamond, how do you think this match is going to go? I was going to say, can I predict last? <laughs> oh, okay, sure, sure. Uh, Lotus, right. I haven't asked you uh, since, I mean, obviously, Robobson and Diamond are kind of the most heavily involved, but I haven't come to you in a little bit. Lotus, what do you think is going to happen in Foolish Mad Men versus F2L? Um, I'm going to be the one to side with Diamond here, because I usually don't do that. 
and I'm going to say that Foolish Madman are actually going to take Legacy this season. They've been so crazy, and FTL had a good season, but not that insane. Nice. Okay. I like it. Uh, Marty, uh, I'm sure there's zero bias coming from you over yeah. here. Uh, so go ahead. Zero tell bias. Me. Zero bias. I'm going to take a page out of my Buddy Memnarch book and go uh, full sweep, F12, three zeros, all the way down. That Easy. is the boldest bold. of bold picks. Love to hear it. Go big or go home. <laughs> at least I'm not going to be the most biased on this stream anymore. Yeah, I'm go. not biased at all. This, this is facts, okay? Of all the languages in the world, I am speaking facts right now. <laughs> sure. Uh, all right, so uh, for me... F2L versus Foolish Mad Men. I mean, I pretty much just called that Foolish Mad Men were going to blaze through the playoffs and take the title. And, I mean, I've been wrong on F2L quite a bit. Um, maybe I'm just going to have time. to keep being wrong, though, because Foolish Mad Men is taking it down again. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be like a, a big win by any means. I think this one's going to be tight. I think it's going down to the final game that gets played. Uh, but I think Foolish Mad Men squeaks out. Which is victory. mine. Oh, yeah. Um, also, I do hope it goes down to the last game because we're having it on Schoolstone, and I want to cast that game. So if it doesn't, I'm going to be mad at Diamond and Bebop. Nice. <laughs> Why that would be sweet. That, that's a Dardar match, not a Diamond match. <laughs> Ron, I want to thank well, it, you. It, 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 it is a me match, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, Ron, I want to thank you because last time you went against F2O and we won, so uh, you're guaranteeing the win again. Oh, yeah, I yeah. I actually, I actually considered that, and I thought, you know what? This is kind of like a win-win on both sides because I can sort of take credit for F2L's victory by always predicting them to lose if they win. And yeah. if they don't win, then I'm like, hey, I did actually say that Foolish Mad Men were going to win, so hey, it works on either side. I'm covered. I'm playing both sides, so I always come out on top. Uh, there you go. <laughs> All right, uh, Robobson, go ahead. Unbiased prediction. Let's go. Yeah. So one thing Justin has put out is um, one of our two losses this season was to Foolish Mad Men the first time around, and they did absolutely destroy us. It was a sad week. Um, but this time around, I think it's going to be a lot closer. I think it is going to come down to the final match, which unfortunately is me versus Dada. I think I'm just going to pull it out you know, high roll like crazy, get a 3-2 win to an F2L. But I'll be there on Schoolstone, Lotus. Don't you worry. Nice. All right, Diamond, well, Three you two. asked for it. Uh, your pick last. Go ahead. Well, no surprise. I'm going to say we're going to win purely because I think it will be close in some seeds for sure. And it is a rematch for most players. I know in the 4 and 5 it's a rematch. But last time we did win, but I guess it's going to be harder this time as well because finals, you know? And it's we, we also, you never know what's going to happen. We Fair. all brought a bad class the last time mm. we played. And we... Oh yeah, last time it was really interesting. You guys brought um all the same lineup, and I saw that. Yeah, and I was, it was you guys... bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, said, I don't know. I like that you guys do that sometimes. Where, like I see a full five classes or five same lineup from left and I'm like, cool. Especially in closed list, it's really interesting. Yeah, we got we got a lot of prep going on. Hopefully, it pays off. I've I've had to enlist help to make sure I don't overthink and choke in the finals again. <laughs> yeah, but you did that, and that resulted in some people talking wild instead. So I don't know if that. Oh no, uh, the so I just need to remember to play ooze on stream this time. Oh. There that was go. the last time I was in a legacy final. Oh, I, w I was involved in that last final too. <laughs> I was on the team. Oh god, uh, yeah, that was that was bad. I also HL tried to target Mel. Good, good old Glee also... versus Robobson, or I guess Try as he was known back then. Yeah, well, I, I tried to target Merlock Priest. I'm I'm very excited <sighs> to be recapping as well. Uh, hopefully, one of you guys will, or both of you, maybe are at least going to have the schedule open to be available to join me next tuesday to celebrate your legacy victory whoever it might be um but uh yeah less than seven days from now five days from now we will have a result between these two teams and we get to crown a legacy champion i'm looking forward to it 
That is it for Legacy, though. Uh, Diamond, I know you have to leave early. Um, you're welcome to say final words now or if you're sticking around, because I am moving straight on to Hero, so you might want to leave anyway before I talk yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, ruined Hero. <laughs> no, let's keep um, going around for Hero. Yeah. Uh, final words, I guess Hero GG's to FPL, good series uh, for Pro, for the boys all the way, and then for Wild. I'm, I'm, I asked Sunday if I could be the cheerleader for everyone's a winner. I don't know if I should do that now because they got spanked, but go everyone's a winner. I got to keep my job there. Nice. Yeah, Keeping yeah. the branding as uh, the front runner too. Love it. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, if we um win this week in pro, then that means all three teams as a part of went undefeated in the regular season. I think that's a cool fact. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm calling it. You know, uh, fact? For the boys is going down because they're playing the unknown. We're taking you out. Oh. Hey, <laughs> yeah. hey, you know what's a cooler I'll... fact? F2 okay. winning all four championships in a season. Oh God, that would be that would be a cool All fact right. if it happens. I'm gonna move on to Hero. <laughs> Thank you again, right. Diamond. No problem. So Hero, we got the meta report up on the screen here. Uh, grains of salt, as always. This is a much more limited meta report than we've been seeing lately because Hero did enter playoffs, so we have far less teams, uh, far less total lineups to cover. Demon Hunter Paladin Rogue Warrior was the most frequently brought, not sporting a very good win rate at all. Uh, we see the class banned the most as Rogue, followed by a little bit of Paladin Warrior, uh, but still, of course, Warrior holding strong is the most banned class overall. Paladin Rogue slightly behind Shaman and Demon Hunter holding over with some bands from before they got nerfed. Uh, but what do we think of this hero playoff meta, guys? Yeah, I think it's... Well, once again, I don't want to give anything away. True. <laughs> I'm just going to say it, it's mostly the same thing as before. You know, people are starting to try... There's not a lot to really take from this because we don't know what kind of prep goes on for the, you know, for those teams. I mean, I know some of it, but obviously I can't say Anita can rebob. So... I don't really think there's much of a meta report to make out of this. You know, yeah. we have numbers on the screen, but the numbers mean nothing to us. And they only represent how good a team may be at countering their opponents. Yeah. But absolutely. we can't even That's tell because we don't know who brought what. <laughs> Hero is right. Hero is also true. Kind of <laughs> the, uh, the stats have been countering. kind of funky for a little while. Yeah, here has been really weird this season because there is quite a lot that's viable, or at least to some degree. Like, there's way too many tier 2 decks which just have, like, one good matchup for Hero to... For there to be any particularly good lineup, but your good lineup is just whatever's good against your opponent's lineup. Absolutely. Yeah. So we don't need to spend too much time then on the Hero Meta Report. We can jump straight into the recap, uh, starting with last week in Orange Conference. Um, Tonk, if you were corny, all uh, Gungan, Us Among, and th this one's Advanced Tactical Lackeys. I want to call them always Top Deck Lethal, but Advanced Tactical Lackeys are your three playoff teams from Hero at the start of last week, uh, and we see only one was able to advance from the Orange Conference. Tonk, if you are corny, avenging their loss in style against a Gungan Us Among from the previous week and taking that 16 to 11 win. Uh, I'm going to start off with you, Lotus, here. Break this one down for me a little bit. What happened in this match? Sure. So. Tonk, if you're corny, versus the Gungan as a Mong was... Well, Gungan as a Mong, even though this was one of the most hyped teams in Hero, it ended up flopping pretty badly. And Tonk, if you're corny, took advantage of this and showed how strong it is as a team. Um, Turtle, C-Mac, and Nine Eyebrows won 3-0, 3-2, and 3-1, respectively. Um, while Dardar and Robocats try to save Agua, but it was too late. Yeah, there you go. Tonk, if you're corny, just showing up too strong. They were the team that ended the season in the top spot in Orange, despite ATL leading all season long until the final week. Um, 
and uh, just one of the most hyped teams going into the season, still alive in playoffs and fighting for that championship and fighting for a Tonk emote, uh, the way I hear it as well. So uh, maybe possibly the, uh, the unbiased fan favorite. We all need a Tonk emote, right? Yes. A Tonk turtle. The Tonk turtle. I I've seen the actual proposed emote and it does look quite sweet <laughs> uh i mean my team got bounced so they're they're my new team i'm gonna root for because uh don't, 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 i, I want to talk about well we'll talk about that shortly yes we will i'm coming to you for that one Robson, by the way um uh, but uh next up in the match we have atl the team that was dominant almost throughout the entire season in orange uh kind of just falling off towards the end of the season and Knocked out in round one of the playoffs. Dab on him coming up with a big victory. This one was pretty close. It looked ATL's favor for a good portion of the time. Marty, talk to me about this match. What happened here? Yeah, just looking at this, it seems like Blue Spartan has really been struggling, getting swept in the end by Base Inc. That brings Base to 6-3, and three, but Blue Spartan now 3-6 and six on the season to finish it up. Your Monk did pretty well with the sweep. Matty Ebbs also giving the team a chance, having a fantastic season, 6-3, and three, getting the 3-2 win over Buse, but that just wasn't enough. Doing getting over Ryzen, 3-1, and Astro Fog doing the same over Nice Jewish Owl were able to help dab on him, put ATL away for the season. Yeah, I, I can't believe I got to say it, but ATL just, they, they were carried by Brushy Tuna. And as soon as Brushy Tuna <laughs> left, you know, uh, yeah. Milo tried to step it up for him. Nice Jewish Owl came in, and um, he, he's definitely a strong player, but he just he couldn't replicate the, the success of Brushy Tuna. And ATL falls out of the playoffs just like that. Dab on him, moving on. And that's our show. We're just going to talk about Tuna and then for today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a great night, everybody. Uh, no, but uh, next up, we, we do, of course, have to move on to uh, the match that uh, I'd, I'd rather didn't happen. But, you know, it is what it is. Congratulations to F2L Black. Uh, just barely. I mean, just barely making playoffs. Actually, yeah. one point less and they don't make it. Tiebreakers to get in. And here it is, the curse of the undefeated. Vote of some confidence, not losing all season long, and just getting destroyed in a reverse sweep from F2L Black. Uh, go ahead and tell me what happened here, Robson. Yeah, I mean, the the extent to which like I thought we were out of the playoff contention, I had already decided on my team for next season. Then I realized that there was still some mathematical chance of us making it. And then somehow <laughs> we, we snuck. Which I took. And it, you know, it put us against the undefeated team. It was like, it's not looking great for us. Then we lost the first two matches after Atachi lost 1-3 to Heat Shock. I lost 2-3 two, to yourself in a really stupid game, which was... I think five <laughs> consecutive high rolls. Oh, it was, it was really uh, fun. So... I don't know what you're talking about. That was a it was a great game of Hearthstone. <laughs> oh yeah, it was it was enjoyable. But you know, you got three of the high rolls. I got two. I would have liked it more if I had got three and you'd got two of them. Touche. Uh, yeah. So, oh, but so I would have liked we... it more if my team had won three <laughs> matches and your team had won two. So I guess you know we take those. Absolutely. Today. Yeah. So. We, we were two two matches down at the start of the week. This was decided by, like, Thursday, I think. So we really had to put in some work. Um, then the Rotted Zombie managed to take down Jim for us, 3-1. I think that was a match we were always kind of banking on. Uh, I think the big match was Hockey Boys versus Ridiculous Hat. It was 3-2. and two. I've seen some of the replays, and they were just stupid as hell so it all came down to sunday diamond had just steered foolish madmen through to the finals of the playoffs some three hours previously goes up against the chronic and gets promptly swept 
three and oh, we're through. We've inflicted the curse upon Vogue of some confidence. It's what they deserve for stealing our name. <laughs> I mean, yeah, fair enough. Uh, if, if anyone can say that, it is Rubab's a member of Vote of No Confidence from uh, before. We, we kind of appropriated the name and uh, unfortunately ran into our karmic retribution in your team, uh, taking, taking that victory in stylish fashion. So congrats again, and we'll be excited to see more from F2L Black next week. See if they can keep their streak going. Um, moving We're on. Just gonna to... keep oh, go narrowly on. sliding through. <laughs> yeah, just just win by the narrowest of art. All that matters is that you win. It doesn't matter how. That's literally been almost every match this week. I think almost like sixty percent more of the weeks have been decided in the final match of the week. Yeah, it's it's been so it's just fitting really that we've been close. Um, basically, one of the very few that wasn't decided that way was this next one, which is Tan Pam Surf Slam versus Ask Hearthstone. Um, Lotus Knight, I'm gonna come back to you for this one here. Talk to me about this match. This was um, uh, there was one really huge victory I know in Desharmo taking a win over Mr. Python on stream, but the rest of it, Tan Pam's really showed up big. Yeah, Tam Pams kind of had, they did the anti Misha's sense that they suddenly came back after a rough start of the season and they're just doing better and better and better. Deshamo knocked down Mr. Python, who was undefeated so far. And Washington Wind beat Kel and Clarity beat Dubles, um, winning for TPSS early, so JR didn't even need to. Play. That's a really strong showing. Yeah, and this was a team that also looked almost out of it for playoffs. Um, if it wasn't for, you know, Dad Legend just falling apart at the very end of the season. Uh, sorry to bring that one up again to you, Lotus, but um, there was a there was a very strong chance that Dad Legend made playoffs instead of Tan Pams, and they wouldn't even make playoffs. Uh, very similar to the case for F2L. So two teams that uh, made playoffs just ever so barely and showing up big in the first round, getting big victories. Dad Legend and choking at the last minute. Then the more iconic duo. <laughs> that uh, unfortunately for them does seem to be their thing in Hero ever since they uh, just like completely dominated all of Hero series on their way to a title it's been a little bit of a rocky road since uh, because they uh, lost hockey that that is probably the entirety of the reason hockey is stupidly unfair at his PR uh, yeah, any, he's, any he's probably a large part He's probably a large part of the reason why we are still in it. Oh, yeah. I would agree. Hockey and chronic. Um, but that is Hero Purple. We're going to move on to our recap for Hero Teal. But you already know the results because, of course, this is what we've just covered. So vote of some confidence. <laughs> Tan Pams, the playoff teams from Purple. Tan Pams remains. Vote of some confidence knocked out. And... On to Teal here, we have Ask HS, F2L Black, and Dab on them, the teams that made playoffs in Teal. Out of these teams, F2L Black and Dab on them remain. Um, we've already done our recaps of these games. Dab on them taking the big win over ATL, of course, and F2L Black knocking out the number one overall seed. Uh, Going to be very <laughs> exciting to see how the rest of the playoffs shape up. Uh, let's get our hero playoff bracket up on the screen here. This is where we stand right now. After one round of playoffs, we are down to the final four. Our next match is F2L Black versus Dab on him. It's a teal rematch. And we've got Tonk If You Are Corny versus Tan Pam Surf Slam. Uh, maybe, maybe with playoffs, we just keep going with some predictions. We'll say Tavern Talk can do predictions uh, also this week. Um, I mean, I, I think I already know Marty and Rebob are picking F2L to beat Dab on him. Lotus, uh, what do you think is going to happen in this match? 
I want to get the talk about. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> talk emote all the way. I'm with you. Let's go Tonk. Tonk beats Tan Pams. Tonk wins title over whoever makes it from F2L Dab. Doesn't matter. We need the turtle Tonk <laughs> emote. Nice. I mean... Excellent prediction. <laughs> as much as we need the Tonk emote, there's a few others that I can think of that are also very needed in the THL server. Um, it's a few emotes that the people don't know they want, but they need anyway. And I'm not talking about any logos. So we will, we'll see how it goes. Solid. Um, prediction for, Cryptic. well, I mean, I know your prediction. You, you predict F2L to win, but Tonk versus Tan Pam's Marty. What do you think? You know, I really got to look at this again because I do know some of the, some of my boys are on Tan Pam's, but Tonk stonks too. So it's like, hmm. Tonk stonk. Tonk stonks. Yeah. You know, I'm, the more I look at it, the more I have to give it to Tonk. Tonk nice. stonks. That's all I can say. Tonk right. stonks. So predicting an F2L versus Tonk title game. Uh, what about you, Robobson? Who's F2L playing in the title game? Yeah, I, th I think it's F2L versus Tonk, which is very, very close to F2L Madman. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> there, there's a lot of overlap. Uh, no real surprise. Uh, we've got some very, very strong players across series here, and they keep showing up, or at least, uh, you know, captain teams as well. It's because I just keep taking the same players into all the teams. Hey, if you it know, keeps I... working, you keep doing it. <laughs> Rod's, Rod is zombie. He's just my secret weapon. Uh, we, we've developed a new, potentially dangerous strategy for THL success in PR-based series. Just get wild yeah. players and stash them yeah. in PRs that are totally unacceptable for their real skill level and cruise to championships. Seems good. Yeah, I, I think my legacy four and five seeds average about 300 wild legend between them. <laughs> that is nutty <laughs> something like that all right but uh any any last words on hero before uh we do our commercial break and then move on to wild yeah i, I was gonna say this season in hero was absolutely stupid especially in teal like no one in teal was particularly up there and no one was particularly down there like, i think transfer students were like one of a conference team that i've ever Scene. Yeah, uh, Teal was, was like really a hard to beat the anyone. whole way through. Honestly, yeah, every, every match was, too. was. Yeah, the, the the different like in Teal there was, bit like, under ten points at any given time between first and fourth. So, I was we were very proud to make it out of that and just keep narrowly scraping through. Uh, Dab on him have got us twice so far but hoping that our playoff luck keeps us going yeah uh... because also also we, we've we've got atachi playing on pc for once for his match so i'm hoping that's the design atachi on pc so that means he has an actual deck tracker spicy yeah and his his daughter can't come and press the concede button in a <laughs> we'll say, we'll say 99 percent We'll save that right. anecdote for a uh, while. Right. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to Wild in a moment. So before we do, I uh, just had to shake up the order a little bit, of course, with uh, with Diamond and Robobson joining us to cover Legacy first. But let's get on over to that caster screen here. I got a rapid fire commercial for you uh, as we race through the rest of all this content to cover. Hey there, Twitch viewers. Have you subscribed to Team Hearth Legends yet? No? Then make today the day to be a legend yourself and subscribe to our channel. This subscription will enable the THL team to help cover the various costs of operating our website as well to improve the quality of our streams and content to our viewers. If you have Amazon Prime or Twitch Prime, you can actually subscribe to this channel for free. Subscribers will get a THL emoticon as well as a lovely THL chat badge, so hit that heart button and keep the notifications on to make sure you catch our team broadcasting live. We appreciate each and every one of you. Special note to our viewers, check out THL's other social media points of interest, our website, teamhearthlegends.com, follow us on Twitter at THL 
NHL underscore HS. Join us on Discord Team Heart Legends. Check out the THL PAL podcast for power rankings for all series wherever you find your podcast. The true Heart Legends himself, Saku, continues to post all of our videos on our YouTube channel. Just search for Team Heart Legends to catch everything previously recorded. You are, of course, watching us on Twitch channel live, twitch.tv slash Team Heart Legends, or possibly on our YouTube channel in the future. And for all you THL fanatics out there, there are THL shows every single day of the week. You can't go wrong tuning in at any time for some amazing Hearthstone related content. Now back to the good part. All right, and that would be on to Wild Meta Report. Let's get that up on the screen. Wild Meta, we have our change in Meta Report now. We're bringing you the archetypes, courtesy of our very own Marty B. Uh, Marty, talk to me a little bit about what we've seen in the final regular season week of Wild with this Meta. So this is pretty significant. Mage is not the most popular class. It's not even the second most popular class to bring. It's actually the third most popular class to bring now at 39 brings. Priest is the most popular with 35 uh, Reno Priests, the variants, and 16 Big Priests. Get Just get Essence by turn 6 and you'll win. I promise that. Um, after that, we have Warlock, 51 brings. Reno Warlock is, again, the most popular archetype brought within warlock surpassing dark lair after last week just like it did two weeks ago we have two discard warlocks four cube warlocks and another dynomancer warlock once again brought by the same player what is i'll that let you guys figure warlock? out who that is uh dynomancer warlock is a uh it's quite a uh quite the deck you play dynomancer cruel dynomancer and you discard it with um expired merchant right and then you have um Spirit Singer Umbra, and you play Spirit Singer Umbra alongside Cruel Dinomancer. And since the Dinomancer is discarded, it summons six Dinomancers, and you can't remove them. But what is the card, Dinomancer? I it's a six mana 5-5 five, five with the Death Rattle. Summon a minion you discarded this game. Yeah, so it's. That's, I mean, you that could. Was real bad. If you have silence destroy effect, then you can get rid of it. it actually, so we didn't win this last week, but the week before, it actually did get a win. They had three Dino Mantras on the board before turn seven. It is hilarious. It's that doesn't even sound that good. I mean, it's not the strongest deck, <laughs> but it is no, a deck. <laughs> the person that brought it likes to meme, and they win when they meme. So what can you say? Fair okay, enough. can't argue with that. Moving on, though, back to Mage. We only have 23 Secret Mages, not as many as we usually have. Uh, LPG Reno Mage sticking around that 6-7 brings mark. One Reno Secret Mage, three Quest Mages, as always. Uh, two Control Reno Mages, a Mozaki Mage, and two Spell Damage Mages. We actually saw one of those Spell Damage Mages on stream at Schoolstone this Sunday, if you're curious. Uh, next up was Dr Rogue with uh, 38 brings, 19 odd rogues, 11 Kingsbane rogues, 8 mill rogues. Mill rogue has exploded a bit in popularity this week. Kingsbane has faltered. Odd is just sticking around close to 20 brings, just under. After that, we have Druid with a ton of Jade Druids, 16 of them, 13 Malios Druids, 3 Aggro Druids, and now Token Druid is getting a foothold in the meta. We'll have more to talk about with Token Druid this weekend, if you're curious. Uh, next up, Pi uh, Warrior. Pirate Warrior, Odd Warrior, ETC Warrior, Galakron Warrior, Dead Man's Hand, and Bomb all being brought. Really, the only two we were seeing a lot of, though, are Odd Warrior at 14 and Pirate at 7. Now we move on to Paladin. 20 Odd Paladins, then we have a Murloc Paladin, Holy Wrath, and a Libram. Finally, Shaman Hunter and Demon Hunter. We have three Demon Hunters. Same as always. Two odd, one soul Demon Hunter. Hunter, one normal Reno Hunter. So just two brings for Hunter and seven Shaman brings. Three big Shamans, three Reno, and one Totem. Spicy one. Nice. A lot of jank. Uh, quite a bit of jank because it's the end of the season. That's to be expected. But things will probably... Slim up starting with the playoffs next week. I don't expect as many weird archetypes brought, like as you said, jank. But I do think we'll still see a lot of variety over the course of the postseason. 
Yeah, definitely my favorite thing about Wild series is just the variety of archetypes we always see in what gets brought in THL each week. Um, but you still have kind of your meta tyrants right now hanging out with Mage and Priest always just uh, holding the absolute most bands. Warlock and Warrior fairly close behind. Um, so there's always quite a few archetypes within those classes that are really strong. Um, but uh, yeah, playoffs, I'd imagine things tighten up quite a bit. We see more, you know, Mage Priest being brought in lineups rather than, uh, oh, let's go with... Uh, you know, something totally out there. Or let's actually bring Demon Hunter. It doesn't seem great and wild. I'm not going to say what I expect people to bring because I would give a bit away. But uh, you may or may not be correct. I won't say much more. <laughs> Fair enough. With that, we are going to move on to a recap of the Green Conference. So uh, as I very belatedly realized, I was completely wrong in saying that the top four teams from each conference will actually be technically the teams that make playoffs. But guess what? I was proven right despite having that wrong because the top four in green and the top four in brown did actually make playoffs. Uh, you know, it would have <laughs> been most points for the at-larges at the, after the top three, but that just so happened to work out to be the top four in both. So uh, I am a prophet somehow. Uh, we take those. Green conference, we start off Everyone's a winner, holding the top spot all season long. No surprise that they were the number one to come out of green. Followed by F2L Viridian, the Entertainers, with a big win to uh, make sure that they solidified their entry into the playoffs. And then finally, Hair Club, with a huge win over Everyone's a Winner, the top team in green, to make sure they made playoffs this week. Um, we're going to start off with that match, Everyone's a Winner versus Hair Club. Um, Marty, can you talk to me about what happened here? This is a major upset. Yeah, so it starts at the bottom. We have Concerned Mom versus Hazer. Mom knew what Hazer was going to bring, and he brought the counter lineup. So that was a very easy 3-1 victory for him. No competition there. White Delight against Absolute. Those two getting the 3-1 wins put Hair Club in a very good spot. They were fighting for the final playoff position, for anyone wondering. So they had to win this week, and this was looking to be the most difficult week to win. After that, Keith had lost, I believe, to 6J. 6J goes into the playoffs undefeated. Okay. And then Otters coming in and sealing it for Hair Club with a 3-0 sweep over Sunday. I was talking to Sunday throughout uh, the week for prep. He had no idea what Otters was going to bring. He thought Otters was going to bring some weird jank. Who knew? Had no idea how to prep. And Otters showed why that unpredictability and volatility is lethal. Getting the sweep there, sealing them in the playoff spot, and Burnt just finishing it up with a 3-1 win over Battle Tagger shows that he's also very capable. Nice. So, yeah, another thing, I think it was mentioned before, but these two teams are going to be playing each other in the playoffs first round, so they have two weeks of playing each other. Oh, thing wow. is, all the, um, all the seeds are getting shifted. So none of them are playing the same person again. Except for I think White Delight and Otters. That is an interesting one. Um, it's yeah. also uh, so... possibly important to note that uh, everyone's winner had basically nothing on the line, and there's been kind of an uh, undefeated curse going around lately in THL. Maybe this was a tactical loss. Maybe they're pulling the <laughs> Tonk versus Agua that we saw in Hero, where you lose to your next round opponent right before getting the revenge win in playoffs. Who knows? But it it will be interesting. I disagree with that, considering F2 Elverian went undefeated last season. Wild is a different beast. It doesn't hold the same standard curses in the rest of THL. <laughs> you can't really see Wild in the same light, especially considering there's a whole different roster of players within the series. Completely different metas. You know, even, even though Hero and Legacy are different, just by nature of the way the series is played, you're still playing the same decks. You can't say the same for Wild, so none of that really applies here. And therefore, you have to think of it in a different way. 
And it just shows like even teams like Hair Club, which, you know, four, four and one, you wouldn't think is insane. They can come and dominate a top team regardless. Yeah, no, it's it's a very good point. Um, my counterpoint is simply uh, Rubobson told me prior to uh, our teams playing in Hero last week that they were going to bring the undefeated curse on us. And I said, <laughs> curses aren't real. And then we proceeded to lose. So, you know, take that <laughs> as you will. <laughs> I made you believe. Um, but uh, moving on to the next match here, we've got the Entertainers versus F2L Viridian. And this was pretty big for the Entertainers. Um, I don't know if they necessarily would have missed playoffs with a... A loss here but I mean a blowout loss they probably would have so there was still quite a bit on the line uh, Robobson talk to me a little bit about this match here what happened sure thing so yeah this one was I think a case of uh, one team did have a lot more on the line than the other one after we already in were you know locked and loaded the entertainers needed to pull out a big result to make it into playoffs and in the end, they, did, they managed to get the win to do so, but it did very much come down to the wire. I think it was game five with the ironically named upset King versus Itachi, taking it three and one. And like Marty mentioned before, I think there was an element of... Itachi was playing while on like a, a long vacation with his family. He was trying to get the match in while at like a lovely cabin with his wife and kids and one of his kids pressed the concede button against the deck that was being targeted so which was you know pretty unfortunate but that is pretty hilarious upset king going in with uh, some tactical sabotage turning atachi's own family against him well played upset king yeah but prior to that no age had taken the it over Rotted Zombie three and one. Marty B, who was here, took it three one against Cherub. Yo Daddy beat Neji three and two, and Corbett had beaten Quake Lord three and one, continuing Corbett's absolutely ridiculous season. Although Neji and Marty both nothing to sniff at with seven and two. True, very solid, Marty. Uh... Getting seven wins and two losses, do you think that might be enough to unrig the PPR and get on there? You know, uh, we'll find out soon. Right? I still won't. I even if I'm on there, I'm still not high enough. I know it, and I know there's <laughs> people that are going to have worse records than me and still be above me. Right. So yeah, I'm still spam that rigged work. regardless. Yep. Nice rigged. All right, uh, let's move on to Brown Conference. We're going to get that up on the screen here and do our recap. Uh, starting with the top team, it is a Noyo team. They finished out the season number one, taking the spot away from Hey Loser, or holding the spot, as it were, since they were in the lead last week, too. Um, followed by Hey Loser in the number two spot. Seas of Cheese. Uh, Lemur, unfortunately, is unable to join us tonight to brag about his team, but I hope that we will hear from him again in the near future. Maybe next week he can rejoin us and, and brag all he wants about Seas of Cheese. And last, we have Bash Bros 2 Electric Boogaloo rounding out your four playoff teams from Brown. Mad Scientists came ever so close to making it, uh, just falling a little bit short, and then the other two teams behind just uh, not doing enough uh, to, to make it. But um, we are going to lead off with that match. Bash Bros 2 versus Seas of Cheese. Extremely close match. I'm sure Lemur would love to share his thoughts if he could, but in his place, Marty, can you tell me what went down in this one? Yeah, so this came down to the wire. Really, I want to point out, Bash Bros 2 won three matches. Seas of Cheese only won two, but because their two wins were sweeps, they were able to come on top. Yeah, that's uh, an unusual route to victory, but still works. Yeah, because of that, this was extremely close. So we have Slod in the one seat, taking it for the first sweep. Then Jailstorm taking it 3-2 to two over our missing lemur, 
Lemur, if you are listening, I hope everything is okay. And we hope to see you soon again. Wishing the best for you. Um, after that, Mr. Python taking a 3-1 win over Siege was crucial. Anumator getting the 3-2 win over Scritch proved key. And then finally, Blue Sombrero taking it back for Season of Cheese. Just putting them over the hump with the 3-0 victory over Reverb. Reverb has been having a difficult season, but really the rest of his team has been insane with Rice Bowl and Jailstorm both being 7-2 in the Brown Conference this season. Yeah, really impressive performances. Um, these these teams are... I, I don't feel like we've talked about them all that much because there have been some other teams that seem dominant, but uh, definitely not ones to be counted out. There's quite a few players uh, that make an appearance on our PPR list, too. Correct. So we will get to that in a bit, though, I believe, right? Uh, yes, very shortly. We've got one more match, of course, to cover uh, as our highlight match from Brown Conference. Ghosts of Fell Screams versus Mad Scientists. It didn't make a difference playoff wise, um, but Mad Scientists didn't know 100 uh, percent going into this that they would be eliminated. I think they did basically need like a 23 point week and some help. Um, Ghosts of Fell Screams trying to find their first win. Couldn't quite get there. Um, Robobson, can you talk to me a little bit about this match? Just a, a little recap of what we saw here. Absolutely. I just was, I got slightly distracted there by noticing that one of the team names is just a Twitch URL. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, can you tell the us what that URL is? Yeah, one more time for self promotion's sake, uh, just for you, MTG Succulent. Twitch.tv slash MTG Succulent. Incredibly named team. Uh, couldn't quite make it to playoffs, but uh, glad that they graced us with their presence this season. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, yeah, so Ghost of Felskin versus Mad Scientist. It was a very close run game which was like you say what neither team really wanted obviously ghost of Felstreams were well eliminated by that point but mad scientists could have got there if they'd absolutely smashed it alas they didn't they did get the win 16 to 10 with the wins coming from two sweeps by jenison and tomato uh, the taito center and cadbury leg who have both had i think pretty unfortunate seasons to forget. Catharsis did also get their third win over Casual R, taking it 3-2 rather than the sweep. But then Ghost of Fell Screams were able to get a couple of wins on the board with Wildcard beating Glare 3-2 and Nate Wolf beating Number Theory 3-2 as well. So Ghost of Fell Screams had a decent week to bow out on, but Mad Scientist's not having as wonderful a week as they would have hoped. And they wouldn't have made it even with those extra points they would have got from the two wins. So at least it, they can think to themselves it was out of their hands. True. And uh, when you get to a situation like this, there's always next season to get hyped for and prepared for. Um, we were thinking we might actually have some news to reveal for you guys about some off-season <gasps> events coming. Uh, unfortunately, that will have to be tabled for <gasps> maybe a future week. Uh, not all the details have been ironed out, but don't fret if your season is over. There is a lot of new interesting stuff on the horizon that we will hear about soon. Uh, but I know you guys don't want to hear any more about Brown Conference. We'll get the playoff bracket up in just a moment, but we got to talk about the player power rankings. Marty, I know you've been waiting for this moment all Wild Series season long. It is our final rigged, rigged, player rigged, power rigged, rankings. Rigged, 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 Spam rigged, those rigs. Rigged, 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 uh, we're rigged, rigged. starting off. Congratulations to 6J. JJJ, JJJ, JJJ. That's six wins. That's or six J's, nine wins. Uh, closes out the season on a 27 and 14 game score, 35 PAR, the only undefeated player in all of Wild Series. Undefeated player actually takes the first spot. Um, might have to rescind some of those rigs. 
uh, at least for this top spot. Uh, but congratulations right. to 6J. Really incredible season. Uh, in the number two spot, we have Corbett. Eight and one. Really strong season as well. Battle Tagger in the number three at seven and two. We've got Quake Lord at four with seven and two as well. Rami coming in at number five, seven and one. Slod making it all the way up to number six. I don't think was even on the list last week. So really great performance to close out the season. <laughs> Legacy five the seed, six by the way. <laughs> Legacy five seed, number six in wild PPR. Uh, number seven, we've got Jailstorm at seven and two. Absolute takes the eight spot at six and three. Maxibon, six and three at number nine. And rounding out the top ten, it is Yo Daddy at six and three. Congratulations to that top ten. Uh, but that's not all. We have honorable mentions. Marty, can you read me off those honorable mentions? Who do we have here? Otter, you dirty high roll. Otter, you dirty high roller. You <laughs> five and four. What? How is he an honorable? A R at five <laughs> and four above me. I am mad. Bryce, well, we may have the same record, but I have more wins than you. How do you have twenty one P A R? And then finally, the man himself, the one who should be higher than he is. Donde has been rigging it against me this whole time. It's me at twenty. Burnt tied with me. You're six and three. How are you tied with me? And wildcard also tied with me at six and three. How is anyone tied with me? But really, congratulations to all of you. So, oh, Rice Bowl, you got a DQ win. That might be why the PR is affected. Rice Bowl, interestingly enough, was actually number five uh, as of last week. Um, got swept by Slad, and they basically like almost completely flipped. Slad might have been just barely out of the honorable mentions. Um, I, I can't believe that Otters at five and four is actually ahead of Neji though, who had a seven and two season and was in the PPR all season long until this final week where he got bounced. Um, but I'm sure Neji can can uh, can uh, you know comfort himself with his inevitable crossover player of the season award that will be probably coming soon. Uh, but there it is. That is your final player power rankings for the wild series congratulations to all players uh who made this list for those of you who didn't um you know spam rigged complain to donde and uh lobby for changes to the system and we will move on to wild playoffs now let's get the graphic on the screen here this one's extra fancy this week, Marty. I love the, uh, the little like brambles in the background there. Um, we got, really uh, learning. We got a so, sweet graphic. Uh, yeah, we'll get a few better ones in the coming seasons as they get better at this. Peak graphic this season. So getting a little fancy, getting some logos in. Hopefully I'll be able to do that for future events. I won't say much more, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, I love it. So uh, with that, you know, congrats again to our wild playoff teams. We have everyone's a winner. We'll face off against Hair Club. Hey Loser will be facing off against Seas of Cheese. F2L Viridian matches up against Bash Bros 2, Electric Boogaloo. And finally, we have Entertainers facing off against Anoyo Team. Uh, so this is the first week of playoffs. We will leave the predictions this time around solely to the realm of Tavern Talk. And that is it for Wild. Let's move on to Pro. Can I just say one more thing about oh, Wild? Go for it, yeah. Um, just wanted to know that Marty has been doing a great Wild weekly recap on Schoolstone, and it is going to happen this week as well. Um, he's bringing some of the great wild players, such as 6J, and it's been a really good show, so I recommend watching that. Um, I'm not sure if it will be Saturday or Sunday this weekend, since we don't have a wild match yet, but whatever day we have a wild match, it's going to be then. Yeah, nice. if anyone is interested in having their playoff match streamed this weekend, please hit me or Lotus up. We're always looking for matches. We really want to have people on stream. And we enjoy having things to cast. So let us know. And we hope to hear from you. 
Awesome. All right. Uh, so with that, let's move on to the pro series, our final series to recap for this evening. Uh, we have up on the screen uh, making its second week appearance. It is archetypes from pro series brought to you by our very own marty b uh marty talk to me about what we're seeing in pro yeah so pro is interesting too because due to the just immense size of the series and the number of players we have we have a lot of archetypes here too i believe justin always just in time was discussing this in the comments in stream on stream uh so, as always, Warrior is the most popular archetype. Oddly enough, Bomb Warrior has exploded in popularity this week. It never was really that big, but 32 brings this time around. It says a lot. This has to probably do with the fact that people are trying to counter Highlander decks, in particular Highlander Priest, which was very popular last week and this week at 36 brings. Still see a lot of Control Warrior. That's a mix of your standard Control Warrior with Silas combo. And anything in between that doesn't involve ETC. In Rage Warrior, 25 brings. Two ETC Warrior brings, which is much lower than where you down since Dark Moon races. One Big Warrior and one Menagerie Warrior from, you guessed it, it's Harash. Nice. <laughs> Next Beautiful. up, we have Rogue at 63 brings. World Kick and Stealth Rogue are pretty split. We still have some Secret Rogues in there with four brings. Not much else to say there. After that is Paladin, 61 brings. Mostly Librum, Penflinger Paladin. We still have some Ramp Paladin. Ramp Paladin exploded in popularity. It died out with the nerf, but people still like the deck occasionally. Pure Paladin also just hanging around as it always does. It's just there. Priest, as we said, Highlander Priest is very popular. Resurrect Priest has fallen once again. Two Elusia Priests, those are very niche. Five Control Priests, so basically Highlander with duplicates. And without the Highlander cards, I don't really know what else to say about Control Priest because it's, uh, it's always different in builds. And then finally, some very spicy brings two Maligos Priests. priests. What yeah, I mean, we are hitting day. the point of the season where people might be memeing a bit when they're out of playoffs, too, I guess. Yeah, but, I didn't check personally if they were out of playoffs or not, but I've also just, seen people I, do that I, when they were in playoffs. What is Maligos Priest? It's Priest, but it runs Maligos. Yeah, it's work. pretty yeah. pretty strange. Uh, so, you know the, the mini... Um, what is it? God, I'm so bad at card names. It deals one damage to all enemies and heals all your characters for one. Yeah, the two mana card, holy something. Holy yeah, ripple. yeah. Well, holy, yeah. Ripple. holy ripple. That's what it's called. So it runs holy ripple and a bunch of other damage spells, and you kind of stick Maligos, play that, delete the board, and I guess win because they don't have a board. Something well, like that. Ripple holy ripple actually goes face. Yeah. Yes, Holy Ripple is the only thing that goes face, so that's all you're comboing Malios with. <laughs> I mean, there's after a reason that, it doesn't get brought much. Yeah, after that, we yeah. have 36 Druids, 12 Token, 1 Mali, 8 Clown, 8 Highlander Druids. This one has been slowly creeping in popularity a bit. And then 7 Triant Druids. Uh, people have try, pretty much been moving away from the Triant builds. See a lot more Token now. I think that's just how the meta has gone, personally. So, uh, next up, Mage. Four Secret Mages, eight Highlander Mages. Highlander Mage has been getting more and more popular as time has gone on. I know some people have been discussing it more and more. I think it's something to keep an eye on because it always tends to get better when there's a solved meta and you know how to build it to counter that meta. So, Spell Damage Mage goes down a little bit in popularity. It was 22 last week, now it's 17. One spell damage mage, or one spell mage, I'm sorry, with Cthulhu, that is. Brought once again, I believe that was a rollover. I have Dr uh, Demon Hunter, mostly combo Demon Hunter, 22 of those. One mid range Demon Hunter, people were asking what this was. This is that fell Demon Hunter that people were bringing and experimenting with early on during the Dark Moon Races release. One Highlander Demon Hunter as well. And one aggro demon hunter. Okay, we haven't really seen much aggro demon hunter for a while, but.
but this week it was around, so I guess it's not dead. Finally, Hunter and Shaman, not very popular, but they're still there. Three aggro shamans, one control shaman, three totem shamans, four highlander hunters, two face hunters, and one quest hunter. Uh, they pretty much speak for themselves. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes uh, the most you can say about some decks is they exist, and then you just move on. <laughs> yeah, that's really all you can say about hunter and shaman. <laughs> so it's, a, it's a sometimes sad. you just want to play Shuma. Nice, true. I don't even know if that list runs Shuma, if I'm being honest. I can't even remember if Shuma is still a card that exists in Standard or if it rotated to Wild. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but regardless, that is your Pro Series meta. Um, there is, of course, some fringe, like, questionable choices, most likely brought by players who are on teams that are not really in playoff contention anymore. Um, you see your bands... You've got Rogue and Warrior are the top ones with Paladin slightly behind and holding strong for total bans across the series uh, throughout all of the weeks. Warrior is the enemy number one. Um, with that, we are going to move on to the recap of Black Conference first. And what do you know, once again, it is Diamond's team up there for the boys. Still no losses holding the number one spot in a stranglehold. I think if they got zero points, they still have the top spot heading into playoffs uh, in this final week. For the boys, just absolutely dominant season. Followed by close. Yashiraj's Clown College, Hype Horizon, and Aeon would be your teams that would make playoffs if the playoffs started today. However, they do not start today. They start next week, or at the end of, uh, I guess, this week of play. Uh, there is still the unknown hanging in there with a chance to make playoffs. <laughs> Swagoy Red uh, in striking distance as well. Bad to the Bone, I don't believe, has any mathematical chance. Same with Cirque du Soul Fragment, Illini Esports, Swagoy Black, and Glock Gora. These teams are... Um, at least at the very bottom, definitely eliminated and starting with Bad to the Bone, I think, out of it. Lotus, do you know for sure? I, did, I yeah, didn't bad, feel like doing bad, that. And everyone under them are mathematically I mean, also, eliminated. So we're going red yeah, and the annoying. Oh, oh yeah, that's you right. Bad, bad to the Bone is also on a buy this week. So yeah, that, that for right, sure, so that draws the, the line. So eliminated. The top six are the teams that have a chance at making playoffs. The most likely playoff teams would be, of course, for the boys who is clinched. Yashiraj's Clown College, Hype Horizon, Aeon, with Unknown and Sugoi Red still having a chance. Uh, we're going to start off with the recap. Yashiraj's Clown College versus Aeon. Uh, Robobson, talk to me about this matchup here. This one went pretty close. It did. Um, you know, obligatory. Fuck Aeon. Um, <laughs> yes, of And that course. is exactly what happened this week. Uh, so, Hat lost in this particular series. He lost to Nails, who has 8-1, and one, and I'm sure... I feel like that might be N Nails in the top 10 slightly later on. Kayla's Luda beat Marcia, and Valera also beat Donde. So the top three seeds managed to win out. Risen got a sweep to kind of make Aeon's point total look a little bit better against Lumble, but then Neji managed to beat Don Donkey 3 and 2 as well. So four 3 and 2s versus one sweep for Aeon. That 16 12 point total is a bit more flattering than it really should be. <laughs> But, I mean, those points are pretty crucial because every point is definitely going to matter in this playoff race. With Aeon, I mean, yeah, they, they lost, and the points, like, um, they don't look great for them, but 12 is still not bad. Anytime you get double digits plus uh, when when the playoff race is heating up like this, they, they oh, need absolutely. all of it to try to keep that spot. Yeah, get, getting those that many points when you have a losing week is... It's very important, and considering they have the Unknown and Swagoi Red kind of nipping at their heels, and Aeon are the current fourth place team, they really need those kind of weeks to be able to stay in it. And 
for, for the top four teams, it is basically just in... Oh, sorry. The second to fourth place teams, it's basically in their hands. If they put up a good week this week, they make it. If they do not, then they open up the possibility of the unknown also going red doing an F2L black. Yep, absolutely. Gotta be on your guard. Nothing is guaranteed in pro series. Uh, which brings us to the next match, the unknown versus bad to the bone. Um, the unknown looked mostly out of playoff contention, needing a really big point total in order to uh, to get close enough to have a shot. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, Lotus, talk to me about this match here. Um, I know you're on bad to the bone. This didn't go great for the team. Was, was the team maybe a little bit right, more checked more? out? Um, I don't think we're checked out. I think in my match, I actually told Icicles, I, I played my best, I always do. But I told him, I hope you win because I want the unknown to have all the strength they need to make Tuna's wish come true and knock Aeon out. Oh, what a guy. Love it. <laughs> Isocles also mentioned to me that he had never beaten you. So this is a uh, very fun, big win for him. Yeah, it was a good match. Um, he brought a very interesting lineup. So I think we had fun. Nice. Having fun when you lose is always, it's always a good time. Yeah, we don't need to talk about the one seed in, in that match there. Uh, we yeah, let's just talk about, about the, all uh, that. the one seed match, Ron. <laughs> so, Ron, I that? see you lost with uh, World Kick, Enrage, Pen Paladin, and Soul Demon Hunter. Man, that's a real shame. Avi was able to scam you with Ramp Pally there. You couldn't get past the Paladin, the Mage, the Shaman, and the Rogue on time? I mean, I, I banned the scam. Uh, I just... I, I wound up not being able to draw any discount cards in my Paladin uh, with a 2-1 lead. Uh, Paladin just kind of hard-bricked where everything costs so much. I was like, wait, that's not what's supposed to happen. It's supposed to be cheaper. So one of those games I died on turn 8 holding two 9-mana Librams of Hope. That's unfortunate. That was that I'm was so fun. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> But it's all right. The rest sorry, of the team. Sorry came for your loss. Big. Not sorry for bringing it up. <laughs> <laughs> naturally, naturally. Uh, but yeah, I was I was very happy to see the unknown come through in a big way. And if we can do that one more time, we're in great shape. Uh, it's easy. All we have to do is beat for the boys. As our you know final match of the season, it'll be great. Maybe they'll just be completely checked out, and maybe they're going to get their tactical win. Right. Loss, yeah, sorry. yeah. Maybe they're they're nervous about the um, the curse, and they'll throw. <laughs> uh, but that is Pro Series Black for you for this last week. We've got one final week remaining in Pro, and it'll be very interesting to see how this playoff race shakes out. Uh, these teams are close-ish, but there are some clear front runners. Let's move on to Pink, where the race is intense um and i can't believe it we have a different logo in the top left it's been like 10 weeks it's always been popeye spicy chicken sandwich but not anymore that is f2l they are showing up taking the top spot in pink off of a huge victory over faction um actually whichever team had won this match would have been the top team in pink. Um, and it came down to, you know, a, a really close one. But before we get into that match, uh, Sheepies is now uh, tied with Popeye Spicy Chicken Sandwich and shows ahead of them in standings, maybe because of tiebreaker, maybe because record is slightly better. Um, that would be your number two if playoffs started today. Popeye Spicy Chicken Sandwiches at the same point total as Sheepies in the number three now, and Faction in the number four spot. This is crazy how close these points are. Then we've got Tap Washers, Due Process, Sushi Rats, No Pros here, all, I think, technically in it uh, for the playoff yeah. race. Clown Fiesta, Attack Mode, Point Locked and Loaded, those teams are for sure out of the playoff race at this stage. Yeah, I mean, it's worth noting that 
no pros here and sushi wraps. They basically need Popeyes spicy chicken sandwiches or faction to get basically zero points as the maximum they can get is 148. Right. Um, mainly so. it would be tap washers that would be, I think, the team that could possibly squeak in because most likely we're seeing this top four would would make it. But you never know. Due process is also on a bit of a tear right now. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, let's, let's talk about the match recap here. So Mr. F2L, I got to come to you for this one. Uh, F2L versus Faction, a 13 to 11 win to take the top spot in pink. That's got to feel good. Uh, what happened here, Robson? Absolutely. I just want to say, um, it's becoming a bit of a theme, F2L versus a Diamonds team in the top two in each conference. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder if we're just heading for F2L versus um, for versus the boys. Diamonds. It's kind of crazy how this, this whole THL season across all series has been shaping up. Yeah, so this one was... It was a, it was a pretty close week, which started off not that close. So, as is customary for F2L's pro team this season, we started off with Che Magician just dumpstering somebody, swept Flying Kraken three zero. Like he literally just kind of says, "Oh, I'm playing this day." I swept, by the way. That is my sole communications with Che throughout the entire confirm. season. Can't <laughs> The dude like, doesn't know much English, but he knows Hearthstone, and he comes in, sets up a date, gets a sweep, yeah. and then says, hi guys, I submitted, and uh, then someone ends up stealing his lineup and doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, nice. like, Dark Moon Fair came out, he forgot to submit new decks two weeks in a row, so he was playing new decks for two weeks when he could have been playing new cards and still won both times dude is crazy Spicy. yeah he started off the week sweeping flying crack and then i believe it was Ressy wabbit took it 3-1 over harash so we were feeling pretty good you know 8-1 up on the week then ariana lost one three to unlimited power started getting a bit nervy Berserk did kind of wrap it up with one match to spare against Tonberry Blue. And then I think Snake was just, I think he played quite late in the evening, had a bit of a rough one, got swept by Foggy. So it came to a very close, very kind of low scoring match in the end. Uh, only 13 to 11 with a sweep on either side. Uh, but it was just enough to get us into first place. And I th think we need like, we need nine points from our final match, which is against Sheepies. We kind of have saved all the hard matches to, for the end. We went uh, Popeye Spicy Chicken Sandwich, then Faction, then Sheepies. Those are our final three matches. Hey, some teams like to relax on their way into the playoffs. Other teams like to, I guess, ramp up the challenges and get playoff ready, maybe. Uh, we'll see which strategy prevails. Like, a lucky could control the schedule, but, uh, you know, that's how it works out for this one. I just got to say one other thing to point out in this match. What an insane five seed to grab for faction. Um, they swapped yeah. out Walter Ruski, who I believe needed to take a little bit of a break for personal reasons from Hearthstone, and Foggy 8 won a Masters Tour qualifier already. So yeah, they're they're not gonna miss a beat. Faction looking scary. Uh, so big win from F two L. It it was very hard fought and very well played for faction. And hopefully we can avoid them again for as long as possible. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, next match, we have Due Process versus Tap Washers. Uh, this was looking to be a really big match for Tap Washers, and Due Process had the possibility of just getting kind of frozen out of playoffs if they didn't get uh, enough points or even just a win here. Marty, talk to me about this one. This was uh, th this looks like both teams now have a shot. 
Yeah, due process taking a, a very close win here, 14 to 12. It all started with Goose getting the much important win over Heatshock. Heatshock in the six and three. I know this is pro and Heatshock is in the one seed, but it's still surprising to see him only six and three and bring whatever he wants and get a win. So well done there, Goose. Uh, Ufric made this interesting by turning it around with a 3-1 win over Rice Bowl. 7-2 now for Ufric. That's going to bring him to the first seed next week. Watch out. Heat Shock in a two seed is insane. Uh, after that, we have two wins, both from Mr. Python and Dr. Bomb. Dr. Bomb took his win 3-2 over MMW, and Mr. Python taking it 3-1 over CMAC. And that kind of closed things out because even with Boolean's loss against loss to Bill Snyder, one to three, due process had gotten enough points to come on top. And this really keeps their playoff hopes alive. Like you said, it's a long shot, but they can still get there. Yeah, uh, you never know. You can't count any of these teams out. Pro is just so chock full of incredible players uh, that it's always exciting to see how these matches play out every week. Um, and with that being said, we are going to get some player power rankings up on the screen for you. Uh, can't wait for what we're going to see for playoffs, what the next week will bring us. But until then, this is the second to last player power rankings for Pro Series Week 10. Let's get it up on the screen. Uh, I would say get the rigged emotes ready. But once again, we have a number one undefeated player uh is something's going right with these power rankings maybe it's more rigged and as we and go down <laughs> yeah uh, so, six and three and banter is seven and two this is rigged <laughs> so we're gonna start flame killer nine and oh 27 and 11 in game score 46 par i don't think there's any chance flame killer loses that top spot german chef could win next week flame killer could lose next week i think flame killer still keeps the number one overall we will see uh but incredible incredible season um, number two, German Shep at eight and one. We've got Honest Zabe in the number three spot at eight and one as well. Harash holding strong in the number four at six and three. McBanterface at number five, seven and two. Brian O'Brien also seven and two in the number six spot. Nails finally out of the honorable mentions, having only lost one game, which I'm pretty sure he said was a DQ at that. Uh, so I'm, in actual games played, 8-0, but 8-1 in record in the number seven. Uh, some scrub hanging around in the number eight named Ron Mexico. I don't know how he got there. He probably gets bounced next week. Uh, in the number nine, we've got obviously moving up from the honorable mentions at seven and three. And to round out your top ten, it is Molestar at six and three. Our honorable mentions, we have Chain Magician. Six and three, Goose seven and two, Revy six and three, Buck Nasty ZB at six and three, and the commissioner of THL himself, Ridiculous Hat, rounding out our player power rankings for pro at six and three. Rigged. Absolutely, Absolutely rigged. rigged. This whole <laughs> thing is rigged. And I will fight Donde behind the school after the show nice we need to stream that yeah. as well Dante, 3 p.m you know where to be me and you <laughs> i love it bring your friends to film it we're gonna get this all over tiktok that would be incredible uh, but there you have it, of course, your player power rankings. Congratulations to the players that made it. Uh, there was one week left for anyone new to make their way onto this list. As always, uh, well, I can no longer say just keep winning, so I will just say just get better PAR easy. And with that, let's move on back to the caster screen as we wrap up for tonight. Uh, we've got... Just a final couple segments for you, our RNG card of the week and our highlight clip of the week that are, of course, always connected with each other. Uh, we're going to start off with this highlight clip here. This was just, I, I can't really even, 
I'll, I'll talk about the chain of events after you watch the clip. Well, let's let's get this up on the screen. But then the the bad news is that Lord Jaraxxus is going Jaraxxus. to be the lethal swing in this game. Crazy. Ron Mexico, just go ahead and clip this now for Hearth Center, my friend. <laughs> Eat Jaraxxus finisher. Wow. My what is done. year go is this? Unbelievable. Crazy. <laughs> so that was from Mayan's win over uh, Valera slash FBM2. Um, a ramp paladin just pulling out this, this ridiculous string. I actually just need to go back to what I wrote down for like how crazy this chain was. The chain was started by Underlight Angling Rod, uh, which gave Myanodon a sky fin, which was active by the dragon, the Nazdormu, in his hand. Uh, so he played the sky fin and it summoned a magic fin. When FBM2 cleared the board, uh, he he had an almost full board clear he left one health up and of course the one health thing that survived was the magic fin which generated three legendaries those three legendaries being uh a cadgar a baron geddon and of course the famous jaraxxus uh which mayan held on to uh until the very end of the game and then used it for the lethal just just crazy crazy stuff so as you would expect our rng card of the week None other than Lord Jaraxxus. Look at him there, all shiny. He's oh, going to be a hero card soon. He yeah, actually, actually that's playing. kind of exciting. He no longer just makes your health 15 or could be randomly pulled from your hand as a 315 minion or something. You just you gain five armor and you get his hero power and weapon. Like, that's actually kind of good. Maybe. And they've got and they've got rid of Bane of Doom, so there's no chance of just five mana summon Jaraxxus anymore either. Oh, sad. <laughs> that card was Fortunate. great. Well, that card is getting rotated too, so... For for all your renounced Darkness Warlocks in Wild. This was yeah, just a fight that, before um, becoming a hero itself. So. Yep. yep. Oh, it'll be interesting. Um, but, uh, you know, very, very exciting kind of a uh, string of events that led to that one um that is everything we have for you all our clips all our series you know the rng card of the week our players of the week we've covered it all thank you for sticking around with hey. us and we are going to go to final words of the night we already had diamond of course who had to leave earlier say his final words so we will start um up at the top with mr f2l robobson go ahead final words on the night just, just shout out to everyone who's on a F two L team. We're we're going for we're going for four championships. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe that's actually on the table right now. Pretty absurd. Nice. All right, Marty. Final words. Yeah. Uh, just like we've all said, we're going for four championships. I also want to put out again, as I did before with Lotus, that we're still looking for wild matches this weekend. So if you're interested, hit up me or Lotus and tell us when you want to be streamed and we'll make it work nice uh lotus knight final words um play on stream it's fun we like watching matches we promise not to be aggressive towards any of the players who are playing um I promise that <laughs> i promise um uh i mean it's fun you can win, you can lose, you can just have a good time, and it's really nice because you'll have people commenting and going over your plays, and it will be helpful later if you want to review your match, see how you're doing, if you're making any kind of recurrent mistakes, so um, come on by, just DM me or Marty if you would like to play. We're still, we still have space for wild matches. Sunday is full of insane Nice. Awesome. Love to hear it. And uh, of course, for me, as always, uh, thank you again for tuning in and watching. Hope you had a great time. We loved having you stop by and uh, keep 
you know, uh, keep your channel locked on THL. We're going to have Tavern Talk coming up Wednesday at 9 p.m. We've got matches uh, that we're casting on Thursday, usually sometime between 8 and 10. Friday, same deal between 8 and 10. Saturday and Sunday, uh, we cover a wide range of time during the weekend. Uh, casters are very flexible. We've got Wild. We've got Standard. It's incredible stuff. And Mako, I think is going to be doing around the saloon again. He's not always super consistent, but he, I, I'm pretty sure, is going to be back on Monday with around the saloon uh, next week, which brings you back to next Tuesday, Har Center, where we're going to talk about what happened in Legacy, who the champs are. We're going to be bringing back Rubobson or bringing Diamond back. Uh, of course, we'll have stuff to talk about with Hero Playoffs, with who made it, and so on for Pro. Uh, all exciting stuff. Until then, hope you have a great night. Thanks for stopping by. Take care.